Everyone has a team that tugs at their hearts for one reason or another, typically for fond memories. The 1994 Montreal Expos would like to throw their hat into the ring to be that team for you, but for the wrong reasons. We at SRS would like to enter this team into the discussion for the single most heartbreaking season in sports history, with some absolutely devastating consequences that followed. But first, you need some context to explain the situation the team was in and why they mattered. In 1969, the Montreal Expos came as a part of the only four-team expansion in MLB history. As the first Canadian team in Major League Baseball for close to a decade, they had basically an entire country in their corner. Like when Rocky seemed to have all of Russia supporting him against Drago. They weren't very good, but as the first team in an entire country, that's gotta count for something, right? In the late 70s and early 80s, the team really started to show some talent. They had Gary Carter, Andre Dawson, Ellis Valentine, and Steve Raj- Nope, not Captain America. Steve Rogers, the five-time All-Star pitcher? Anyways. Thanks to a strike in 1981, the Expos qualified for the playoffs based on a revolutionary new concept that wouldn't come back for almost 15 years called the Division Series. Crazy idea, I know. They won the NLDS against the Phillies and matched up against the Dodgers in the next round. And they were so close to reaching their first ever World Series. And finally tonight, the Montreal Expos are still just one win away from a spot in their first World Series. They lost. Following that loss, the Expos, a team with better attendance than the Yankees in the early 80s, would face hard times. Things would go dark in Montreal for a little while. Sort of. Only two teams per league made the playoffs in this era, so despite some more than respectable win totals, truly meaningful baseball wasn't played in Montreal for a few years. Their homegrown stars would depart, and they'd trade another who wouldn't realize his potential until after he left. That guy had all his teeth with the Expos organization, too. Then, in the early 90s, they made a statement. I am back! They built up to a 94-win season in 1993. They finished the year on a 30-9 and run. Only two small problems. They didn't reach the playoffs because the Phillies won the division, and the team that beat the Phillies in the World Series was the other Canadian team, who now had back-to-back -back titles and the attention of Canada and the rest of baseball. So the Under the Radar Expos were determined to take the next step in 94, and boy were they in position to. Look at some of the talent on this team. These five representatives for the All-Star Game, a young rookie prospect named Cliff Floyd, Larry Walker, who give it a couple weeks and he might be in the Hall of Fame, and a young stud pitcher named Pedro Martinez. Yeah, this team was pretty good. They would go on to absolutely steamroll the National League during the summer of 94. They went 46 and 18 from June 1st to August 11th. Keep that second date in the back of your mind. The Expos held a respectable lead in the NL East with a 74 and 40 record at that time, easily enough to make them a World Series favorite. 74 and 40 gives you a win percentage of 649. Over a 162 game season, that's a projected win total of either 105 or 106, depending on what your feelings on rounding are. Before the season, Expos fans felt like they were going to be good, but who saw this coming? What did I say? I'm not gloating, but what did I say? Did I not say that we would win it? The Expos also have 23 games left against teams that are 8 or more games under 500, so a big winning stretch in the last month and a half of the season could propel their win total even higher than that. Thanks to Matt for lending me the blackboard he's been using recently to make this next part more visually understandable for you guys. Let's pretend for a second that they beat up heavily on those teams and win 110 games. Look at the company they're in for best teams of all time. Safe to say they were well on their way to a historic season the fans in Montreal had never seen anything like. What happened next is nothing short of devastating. The season ended. Just like that. No more baseball was played. It was August 12th. The rest of the 1994 season was cancelled, including the entire postseason. The players went on strike because of a major labor dispute that clouded over the whole season and they would not return until just before the 1995 season started, robbing the Expos of the chance to write a fairy tale ending. By the time baseball came back and the 1995 season started, the Expos would be without Larry Walker, All-Stars Ken Hill and Marquise Grissom, and closer John Wetland. 
Pedro Martinez would be in Boston three years later. They drafted Tom Brady that year though. See, the Expos already weren't the financially strongest team in baseball. With the second lowest payroll and eighth lowest attendance in the league in 1994, missing out on every home game for the last month and a half of the season, and the inevitable postseason that would have followed was devastating. The higher ups at the organization made the decision to cut costs for their own survival. Things didn't get any better. After going through unprecedented stints of bad attendance, playing a quarter of their home games in Puerto Rico, a failed attempt at a new stadium, and the possibility of literally having the whole franchise removed from the MLB, the league itself bought the team. It was that much of a problem. The league made the painful but much needed decision to move the team to Washington, D.C. The Expos were out of Montreal 10 years after their would-be magical season. Think about it, this team went from being in a position to dominate baseball for years to come, to being completely relocated in 10 years. That's unbelievable. What hurts even more is the man who caught the final out of the 1995 World Series was a former 1994 Expo, as was the pitcher who got the last out of the 96 World Series. Throughout the early years of the Washington Nationals, the team was mired in similar failure, which led to a rather infamous video from a dumb teenager with a bad microphone. Until in 2019, 50 years after the birth of the Expos, and 25 after the brutal end of 1994, the Nationals won the World Series. The same year they celebrated their Expos past, the franchise went on a miracle run and won it all. Baseball is just great like that. Montreal's baseball history has lived on. The Blue Jays play a spring training game at the Expos' old home every year. The 94 Expos have been honored on several occasions, including by the Montreal Canadiens hockey team. The Canadiens even adopted the Expos' mascot so that this little fella would have a new home. Never forget the Expos. Montreal knew and loved them for 45 years, and circumstances completely beyond their control took away their chance at immortality. Much love to Pedro Martinez, who, after winning a World Series with the Red Sox to end their 86-year drought in 2004, paid tribute to the Expos during his celebration. I would like to share this with the people in Montreal that, that are not going to have a team anymore, but my heart and my, 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 my ring is with them too.